cat. Boring, shouldn't I? Uh, if you've taken classes with young engineers before, you've definitely used Fly to Learn. Um, and it should be fun. Uh, anyway, so, sorry for the, um, sorry I'm sort of just talking. I'm confused at how few people there are here right now, so I'm going to give it just a minute before we go ahead and get started. Um, we will need to download the demo version of X-Plane today. Um, it probably will take us the entire class to download it, but I can still do some lecturing without actually having to um, use X-Plane and everything. So, what I'm looking for you all to do Oops, that's not the one I wanted to do. It is in one second. <laughs> You're going to want to go to the link that I am going to send you, or I can tell you the URL so that you can download it yourself. So to those of you that are just uh, coming in, we're going to be working um, with fly to learn and X-Plane today and probably for the rest of the year. Fly to Learn is a curriculum designed by Mr. D. I have been working with it um, pretty extensively to make an advanced curriculum. We actually use X-Plane 9 to aid in our studies. So what I'm having you do is go to the URL that I sent in the chat box which is xplane.com slash download slash older. And we're going to be downloading the Xplane 9 demo. Not update, not Xplane 8, Xplane 9 demo. So from my experiences last class, this probably will not finish or may finish not until like 6.45. So I will be doing some lecturing today. And I will be going sort of over the software just visually so you can sort of get a sense of what to expect. If you've taken classes with young engineers of today before, and you already have um, the full version, which is on a disk. You may use that. But if you have not, or you can't find your disk, like me, this is where we're going to be. So what I'm going to ask of you is to raise your hand once you've begun the installation. If you need some help, that's what I'm here for. So I see a question. Explain 9 demo, correct. Either Mac or Windows. I doubt you have a well, Linux computer. Also, the expected installation time is probably not right. Just to warn you. Question, you have X-Plane 9.71 downloaded already. Is that okay? Yes, that is okay. We just want to make sure that we're on the, we're using version 9, not 10. So that should be okay. So the question was, how do I get to this page? 
I sent you a link in the chat box. I'll send you a link um, to the uh, question, or in your questions. And as you can see, the URL right here. The question was, how long will it actually take, given that it's staying 14 minutes? I don't know. I had some, st er, starting from zero, like six, or yeah, six o'clock proper, I had some folks get it installed by 645, even though it would say only 15, 20 minutes left. It told me I had 20 minutes for about 25 minutes, so that's just how it goes. <laughs> I believe at our next lab, yours is done already? Oh my goodness, mine took forever, are you for real? <laughs> That's awesome, I'm jealous. What? Oh, you're probably talking about just downloading the installer. Downloading the installer took like 10 seconds. You'll actually have to open up the installer and install. You downloaded it earlier. Can you remind me on which one you need? You need X-Plane 9. Actually, let me see if I can find something for you. Uh, you're going to be wanting the demo because we'll be giving you um, disks for the full version at your next lab. Sorry folks, give me one second, I'm trying to. Show you a picture of how it will look once it starts installing, unless it's not gonna work for me. Uh, of course it's not gonna. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. But once it starts installing, you'll see a, um, a window pop up. You'll have to agree to the terms or whatever, and then it'll install. So also, raise your hand if you already got it. I just want to see where we're at so I don't totally leave y'all in the dust. You got it? Okay. You clicked agree and then it disappeared. Um, it's not minimized or anything, right? If it isn't, go ahead and tr open it up again. That's weird. And your time is going up, yeah, that's to be expected. 47 to 109. Yeah, and that's why we're not probably gonna get it today. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Good to know. I'm gonna give y'all just about another minute or so to get that installation be started. And we'll have that running in the background while I do a spiel and stuff like that. <laughs> I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving, to those of you I didn't already wish it to. Let's 
and your computer is really laggy. And that's going to happen. Is it because, or is it just in general, or is it today that it's being laggy? Today? Yeah. A lot of resources being used by your computer right now. <laughs> All right. It says three hours. Yep. And that's to be expected. That happened la to me last class, too. Unless you have the best internet in the universe, it's probably going to take some time. So we're going to have that running in the background while we go on. So today, folks, we're going to begin our last part of the uh, last part of the semester. We only have a couple more classes left. Let me see how many we've got left, actually. One, two, three, four, five. Four or five classes left. We're going to be working with Fly to Learn, which uses Xplain, the software that you are downloading, as an aid to help your learning. So. Fly to Learn is a curriculum that's based on aerospace, or specifically a flight simulator, so that we can learn some aerospace concepts. So you all know me. Um, I got my degree in aerospace engineering. i really into planes, more so into space, but planes are pretty cool too. I know all sorts of stuff about it. So this is my favorite part of the semester. I hate that we do it last because I'm just excited about it all the time. So real quick, what I'm going to do is go to flytolearn.com. You can do this too if you'd like. Um, I'll tell you why I suggest it in a second here. So Fly to Learn is a curriculum developed by Mr. Dubik a couple years ago. And I actually have been working on furthering this curriculum, making it a little bit more challenging for more advanced students. So even if you've taken classes with young engineers of today before, um, the goal is to get farther this year. And the goal is to have more fun this year. That's ultimately our goal, for y'all to have fun. What's nice about Fly to Learn is that um, all of the materials are available to you freely. So if you have gone to flytolearn.com, we're going to click on educators really quickly. And on this nice side menu here, You'll notice that there's a couple things. Specifically, it says lessons, videos, PowerPoint slides, and webinars. So not only is all of this stuff going to be on our YouTube channel, so every lesson that I do, but you also have extra videos that you can watch, as well as the first couple lessons um, on webinar that you can also watch if you are having some trouble with how I teach something, maybe. There's also some PowerPoint slides on that you really need those, but the most important thing we're going to have is underneath our lessons, our lesson plan specifically. The curriculum of Fly to Learn, we've got 10 lessons completed so far, but it has a more in-depth um, explanation of what we're doing every day and it gives you detailed directions on how to do basically anything that, you know, that's relevant to the course. So, for example, this first lesson, which we'll talk a little bit about today, but given the lack of um, X-plane that most of us have, we're not going to do any actual flying today, and that's okay. But, for example, if you want to know how to take off, we have step-by-step -step directions. We have all sorts of stuff. I'll <laughs> go over that a little bit later. So if you want to follow along with this, you may. You can do that anytime you want 
with me or without me. Cool. So let's see, where should I get started? Next class, we'll be learning how to take off in an airplane. This class, we will be learning about the different instruments that a pilot will use to fly. And we'll talk some about potential and kinetic energy. Now, I'm sure that y'all have heard or know a little bit about potential and kinetic energy. But let's start with kinetic energy. Can anybody explain to me what kinetic energy is, if you know? If you don't know, it's fine. I'll go over it in a second. What is kinetic energy? So, Lauren's already got her plane flying and it's awesome to play. Yes, it is a lot of fun. And there's all sorts of airplanes and we'll talk about it in a minute. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. So yes, no is correct. Kinetic energy is energy that is in motion. So say that we're on a roller coaster, we get to the bottom of that big old drop off. Our roller coaster car has a ton of kinetic energy. Now what about potential energy? Potential energy is a little bit harder to grasp since it's not necessarily connected to the motion. Anybody have any ideas? Kinetic is in motion. And potential is aptly named because good guess because it's still it's not quite still and I'll actually just go ahead and tell y'all a little bit what, about what it is it's basically energy that is stored so we got the moving potential energy is stored now that's a little bit weird to think about so I'm going to put it to you like this your gas in your gas tank. Okay? When your car is in motion, the energy in that gas is converted into energy of motion. So your car is moving. Your gas is a big reservoir of energy, but it's not energy that you can see quite yet. It's just basically stored energy. So fuel is a source of potential energy. When it's burned, it becomes, it transfers to kinetic energy. Now, that is only one kind of potential energy, so in fuel. The other kind is a little bit weird too, in that it's energy caused by having a certain height. So when you're at the top of a roller coaster, the very first hill that you go up on, you have not very much motion, but one single move and you'll go flying down that roller coaster, right? So if you're at the top of the hill, gravity's gonna pull you down. The energy that you could possibly have when that roller coaster is going down is potential energy, okay? So specifically in aircraft, the potential sources of energy that we have are the height of the airplane, so the higher you go, the more potential energy you have. And the fuel, which is literally stored energy in a gas tank. Now, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's just going to change forms. So we got to think about it this way. Um, when you're going down this roller coaster, the potential energy gets lower and lower as you go down, and the kinetic energy increases more and more as you go down. And that's the same thing for, air, for aircraft. When you're on the ground, you have plenty of potential energy in fuel. When you're in the air, you have a little bit of potential energy um, in fuel, a little bit in height, but a lot 
in motion. All right. So the way that your plane moves is going to be very, um, very connected to the types of energy here. Now, there's more types of energy than just kinetic and potential. For example, heat um, is a different kind of energy that may make the actual values for kinetic and potential be a little bit different. So some energy can be lost in heat, but for the most part, airplanes are going to be worried about this. All right. So this is a little bit misleading because so we're not doing all of this today. We're going to be t right now talking about flight instruments and discussing conceptually how this stuff is going to work um, in real life. So eventually what we're going to be using is the Cessna 172 for our aircraft in the flight simulator. This is one of the most um, popular recreational aircraft ever built. It's a two or four seat plane, very light. Um, nothing that you'll see like at the international airports around you. So if you were in the pilot seat of this, you would probably see something that looks like this dashboard right here. Okay. So all sorts of knobs and switches and a little bit intimidating stuff here. Um, but when we're going to be taking off and landing, as well as some while in flight, there's only a couple that we really need to be concerned about. All right. This one with all the green on it, it's called the airspeed indicator. It's basically the speedometer of your airplane, but it's not in miles per hour. Anybody have a guess in of what unit that this would be in? Any ideas? If it's not in miles per hour, it's not kilometers per hour, but good guess. Well, I guess sort of, but knots. You got it. This is going to be in knots. So you'll notice that um, the airspeed indicator has a couple different um, bars that go around with it. Um, the green, just like with a stoplight, means that's a safe airspeed in general, and I'll get to more on that in a second. Um, the yellow means, okay, getting a little bit fast, we're um, stressing out the airframe structure a little bit, and we're really not trying to get up to these speeds here. All right. When we're taking off, which we we'll, won't be doing today, we will be needing to watch this. We're going to wait for our indicator to get to 70 to 75 knots before we lift our nose up. So I'll go over this again um, on Wednesday when we do fly. So just keep that in mind. This is one of the more important indicators we'll be discussing. The one right next to it is called the attitude indicator. Now I'm not talking about a sassy airplane here. Anybody have an idea of what attitude stands for? It's okay if not, it's kind of a weird, weird idea here. Well, if you look at the something to do with height, it's a good thought. Not necessarily, I wouldn't say. We'll get to that in a second, but good thought. If you take a look at this meter, you'll notice that the top half is blue. The bottom half is brown, gray, tan. I don't really know. I guess it's tan. And that's supposed to mimic a horizon. So you'll see this wonderful little uh, triangle here. What this basically is saying, this whole, um, the whole indicator itself, sorry, it's showing you your airplane's position relative to the sky and the ground. Your computer is going insane. I'm sorry. I know that the uh, installation is not helping.
But um, basically, this triangle is going to stay stagnant. No matter what your plane does, it's not going to move. Right now we're on, you can't really tell right now, but we're on the runway getting ready to fly. So, you know, our plane is upright just like it should normally be. Now if I were in the air and I turn my plane so that I'm upside down, this would change. If I'm upside down, the, um, the brown part's going to be on top and the blue part on bottom. So think of it as sky and ground. You can see your airplane sort of orientation that way. Now that sounds kind of silly. Why would a pilot need this? You can see the sky and the ground. Why would you need an indicator? Can anybody take a wild guess? Why would you need an extra indicator when you have eyes too? No ideas? Well, what if you can't see? And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so we won't be needing that as often, but it, it will be nice to have, especially in your more um, complicated airplanes that the software does have. And let's see, for when pilots eyes on the controls. That's actually not a bad explanation either. I didn't even think about that one. So you don't always have to be looking out the windshield. Huh. Or if you can't see over the dashboard. Well, I hope you could see over the dashboard because if you can't, you might need to get a booster seat. That's not a pilot I would fly with. <laughs> but theoretically, yes, a pilot could fly without any sort of sight. They theoretically could fly literally only looking at their controls. So, good thought. I had to think about that. So the one next to that one is the altimeter. What, oh, what is an altimeter? I saw the answer to this one earlier. Saw the answer when... I asked about attitude. It's gonna control, not control, but it's gonna show you how high you're flying. So you will notice that there are two hands on this guy, a short and a long hand. The short hand is going to be your thousands because it's gonna be in feet. The long hand is going to be your hundreds. So right now, the short hand's about at two, the long hand's about at nine. So just because I know the answer to this, this is basically saying it's almost at 2,000 feet above sea level. But Miss Saunders, we're not flying. The airport that this is at has an elevation of 1,900 feet. So that's why it's not always going to start at zero. So those are the three most important indicators we'll be watching um, when we take off and land and fly and stuff. I'll do a quick summary of these, some of these other ones. Um, this one is showing you how much you're rolling. So rolling isn't like wheels or anything. It's literally just your plane um, moving its wings up or down. So not like a bird, but if it tips its left wing up and its right wing down, it could be turning towards the right. Okay. This one right here is called the heading. It shows the direction your plane is heading relative to the um, 
geographic north or magnetic north, I think. I can't remember which it is. And those are going to be your other two big ones, but you won't necessarily need those. You'd be a bad pilot. It's really just a matter of practice. So what's cool about flight simulators and this in general is that you're doing this to learn. Pilots do the same thing to learn. Some pilots will sit there in front of a flight simulator um, not only to get used to their planes, which they definitely need to do. I mean, look how intimidating this looks right here. That's a lot of stuff. This is hundreds and hundreds of hours of learning to know how to use all this, right? But also what's cool about flight simulators is that practice flying your plane, but also practice taking off and landing. So you go to your local airport, RDU, Charlotte Douglas, wherever you are, you see these big old jet liners on a very simple runway. Um, you don't have many mountains or anything around here. But what if you're trying to land in Nepal, in the middle of the Himalayas where it's mountainous and crazy? A pilot who sits there and flies these big old planes with these big old runways with these easy approaches and takeoffs doesn't have to think anything about it, or they will have to think about it. Do you think any old pilot can land on a really weird, short, mountainous runway? Do you think that's possible without any practice? With piloting, just like everything, exactly. Practice takes perfect. That's what's cool about this flight simulator because you can use it just like a pilot would to practice taking off and landings. So if you think you're going to be a bad pilot, practice, practice, practice. Once you understand it intuitively, no big deal. Um, all right, so taking off and landings, or take off rather. We're going to now, yours is done installing. All right, well, we're not going to be using it today. I just want to make sure that you get it installed. If you want to open it up and play around with it, if you've got it installed, though, you're more than welcome to, as long as you are still paying moderate attention. <laughs> so the next thing is what we're going to talk about is what gives power to the plane's engines. It's called the throttle. The throttle in the Cessna 172, which is the plane we're using, which is this guy, is this little black knob right here. I'm going to be using a few terms um, about the throttle. Specifically, throttle up and throttle down, as well as push the throttle in or pull it back out. So when I push this throttle in, I'm throttling up which means I'm giving more power to the engines. All right, so I don't have to push it all the way in. You can push it only part of the way in. But when you're taking off, do you want your throttle to be pushed in or no? Any, any ideas? When you're taking off, do you want your throttle pushed in or pulled out? Remember, throttling in or push your, pushing your throttle in means you're giving your plane power. Pulling it out means you're taking away its power. You do want it in. Exactly. How far in? Yes, you got it. All the way in. We want our power to, or our throttle to be pushed in all the way um, because takeoff is going to be the most difficult part of overtaking um, or over 
powering the force of gravity. And hello, welcome to class. So take off, we have to overcome gravity, we use the most power there. When we land, we don't want our throttle pushed all the way in. When we're in the sky, finish climbing, we don't want to push our throttle all the way in. We want just enough to keep our airspeed constant. It's going to be, what, 100 knots, I think, something around there. So we'll get, we'll use this a little bit more um, when we actually do the whole flying thing next class. So the other thing we're going to be needing to take a look at for takeoff is this set of light up buttons right here. The one that's lit up right now is called brakes. It does exactly what it sounds like. When the light is on, it means your brakes are on. We're going to need to take advantage of this when we're getting used to taking off because um, we want to get all set up before we actually start going and try to take off. We don't want to take off just completely askew, but I'll talk more about that. A um, couple other things. A lot of these things do, a lot of these like knobs and stuff do stuff inside the cockpit that you can't really see. Um, unless you're looking for it. So don't you don't need to worry about a lot of these. Also, I don't know if the demo version has it, but the full version has a radio with real-time airport chatter. So like air traffic control and stuff like that. You can actually listen to, right now, what they're saying over in Germany <laughs> over the radio. I don't really know how to do that, or I've never actually worked with the radio, but I read about it while I was learning about this stuff and I was totally baffled at how cool it is. Now obviously you have to have an internet connection for it so um, it's pretty cool stuff though it really really is. Um, so anyway let me see where we're at here. What else do I have to go over? I can't even remember right now. <laughs> All right, so I talked about potential energy. Nah, 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 nah. All right, I know what I'm going to do now. All right, so again, your download is almost done. Okay, and cool. Once it is done, you can go ahead, open it up, and play around with it some. We'll be working with it for the rest of like the semester, I think. So. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I'll show you to do everything um, next class, but I do want to give you a quick overview of um, setting up your flights. I know that not all of you have this ready yet. No worries. I'll show you again next class how to do it. But um, this software has all sorts. Actually, wait. Before I say that, we're going to be giving you the full version of this probably at your next lab. The demo version is great. It has everything the full version does except for one horrible, horrible thing. And that thing is the fact you can only play it for five minutes before it closes down. You can reopen it and play as long as you want. Or you can reopen it. Oh, it's 10 minutes now? Oh, okay. I guess it was always 10 minutes. You're right. Okay, 10 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> You can play it forever, just the demo version, but only for 10 minutes at a time. So just keep that in mind. But um, it's cool because the software's demo has all the features, just minus unlimited time. So what we have here in the middle of our quick flight setup, and I'll tell you all about this later, don't you worry. Um, if you do have X-Plane open, you'll find it in data, I think. Or setup, I can't really remember, so I don't have it open right now. How do you unpause the game? You um, hit the letter P on your keyboard.
But anyways, there's all sorts of different um, airports. So this is a huge, huge, huge list of them. I don't know how in-depth it is, but just keep whatever airport you're using in mind when you do take off and land. The plane that we're going to be using, the Cessna 172, small airplane, doesn't need a really crazy big airport. But if you're going to be using, like, I don't know, the space shuttle maybe, which is an option, you probably want to find a bigger uh, airport with a longer runway. But where I was going with this, we'll be using the Innsbruck Kronobitten Airport, which is an airport I'm guessing in Germany or Switzerland or something. And it has the airport code LOWI, L-O-W-I. It's a longer runway, but it's suited for a smaller plane like the one we've got here. So it's pretty cool because you can simulate almost anything. It'll tell you how high your elevation is. Um, like I said, it's about 1,900 feet for this one. Cool, cool. You can choose if you're taking off or if you're doing a landing practice. Um, by default, you're going to be taking off off runway 08. And later when we do landings, you'll need to click on the three nautical miles next to it, but don't worry about that right now. It'll just determine um, where you start your landing sequence. So while we're practicing and getting used to the software, we will not be touching any of this cloud stuff. Obviously, weather is a big factor when you're piloting, but we're not going to play with that right now. Similarly, we're not going to worry about rain, storms, turbulence, so we're going to put it to none. And we are going to want to have perfect visibility, which would never happen in real life, but we need to start somewhere, right? We're going to be starting also at 0800 hours, but if you wanted to practice night landings, you can change that to later in the day, for example. But Again, I will show you more about this next class once everyone gets their stuff ready. Um, and yeah, so let me see what else I've got here. We don't really have to watch anything for it. So, I guess for now, any questions on what I've gone over so far, other than, oh my goodness, this is so cool, or oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed? <laughs> is this so cool? Okay. I like, I like that question. That's a good one. It is a lot of fun, and this is legitimately how it would be like to pilot a Cessna 172. Yes, if you nosedive and crash, you will explode, so that's fun. Um... What else did I have to say? If you want to see what it's like to fly the space shuttle, which you would never do in normal life, you can. And also what's cool about the software is it comes bundled with another software called Plane Maker, where you can actually build your own planes and fly them. Plane Maker is a little bit weird in that it's really hard to start from scratch, but if you take an airplane that's already been made and edit that, you can tweak every single airplane into something more, something else and see how it flies. You barrel rolled into a landing pad thing. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a couple helipads on this one, but, because um, there are helicopters as well. Don't ask me how to fly them, I do not know. You can go into space. Never done it before. But really, this is one of the cooler pieces of software that we work with, I think. And yes, space. You can. So what I'm going to do for the last... Oh, uh, okay. I didn't realize that. I've been 
I haven't played Portal 2 in forever, and so much Fallout in my life and stuff. Indeed. I need to replay that. Goodness. So what I'm going to have y'all do for the last 15 or so minutes of class, um, if it's still downloading, so it be. If you finished the download, you are more than welcome to keep messing around with this, um, get some practice in now. I'm not going to teach you how to take off yet since I want everyone to be on the same page. But I'm also not going to do any more lecturing. So if you don't have anything better to do, you're more than welcome to stay on, ask me questions, play the game. I guess it's not really a game, I guess it's more of a simulator. But at this point, if you do need to leave, you are more than welcome to. Um, if you need help with anything, I'm here. So you said your first flight was a success, but then you crashed. No, that's not really supposed to happen, but it's going to happen when you get started. One of my first times flying in this guy, I lifted off just fine, but I actually moved my mouse too quickly and f went right right into the, the ground. It was sad.